Hey everyone, welcome back to Slide Uplift. Today we're going to learn how to create a really awesome image slider in PowerPoint. It's going to look super professional and it's easier than you think. To save time, you can even download this template using the link in the description. Use this code for extra 10% off. Or if you'd like to do it yourself, keep watching. First things first, open a blank slide, then right click on the background so this little menu pops up. Then click on Format Background, Solid Fill, and Color. If you've already added a color you like to your recent colors, you can select it from here. If you want to use this exact same color in other presentations, you'll need its color code. For this, click on Custom. Add your color code under hex. We're using code 0C0E16, and there we go. We have a nice dark background. All right, now let's add some text to our slide. Go up here to Shapes, grab the text placeholder. Now type in your title and double click the text to select it all. Under Fonts, click on Color. Let's change that to white and center it too. Now let's make it a bit bigger by bumping up the font size right here and change the font to Poppins. Repeat these steps to add a description under the title. This time, let's decrease the font size a bit so it's a little smaller than the title. Next, go up to Insert, then over to Pictures, and click on This Device. Now, hold down the Control key and click on each image you want to use, then click Open. Resize these images by clicking on them and dragging the corners to make them smaller. Next, select all the images, go to Crop, and then click on Crop to Shape. Let's choose the rectangle. Okay, now we'll arrange our images to create the slider effect. First, drag all the images completely off the slide. Now grab one image and drag it to the center of the slide. Drag the sides to make it wider and drag the top and bottom to make it a bit shorter. Now, to make sure the image fills the entire rectangle we created, click Crop and then select Fill. Now right-click on your second image and select Bring to Front. To make this image the exact same size as the first one, drag it right over the first image and then adjust the edges until they line up perfectly. Like before, click Crop and then Fill. Now we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the images. Once all our images are the same size, we'll arrange them. Select all of them, go to Align, and then click Distribute Horizontally to space them out evenly. Now, let's group these images together. Select them all again and press Ctrl plus G. This makes it easier to move and resize them. Let's make the whole group a bit wider by dragging the sides. Now, go to Align, click Align Center, and then Align Middle. To give it that cool perspective effect, we need to adjust the vertical size of the images. Select the images on the far left and right sides and make them a little shorter by dragging the top and bottom. Then do the same for the images next to them, making them a little taller than the outside ones, but shorter than the middle one. Finally, select the middle image and make it the tallest. See how it creates that nice sense of depth? There's one more little detail we want to take care of. Select each image one by one, go to Crop, and click on Fill. This just ensures that each image is perfectly filling its rectangular frame. Now, let's add our logo. Let's resize it to a smaller size. Go to the Shapes section and grab a circle. Draw a circle on the slide and then place the logo on top of it. Change the color of circle. 
Select the shape and right-click, then select Bring to Front. Select the logo and right-click, then select Bring to Front. Select both the circle and the logo, and press Ctrl plus G to group them. Now we want to duplicate this logo circle for each of our images. Place one logo circle above each image. Select one of the logo groups, right-click on the logo itself, then go to Change Picture and click this device. Open the new logo you want to use for that image. Now we're going to do the same thing for all the other logo circles. Let's move on to the animations. All right, now we're going to create the animation by duplicating our slide. Awesome. Now we have two identical slides. On this new slide, we're going to start creating the slider effect. Select the group of images on the right side. We need to ungroup them first, so right-click, go to Group, and click Ungroup. Now let's delete the logo circles from this duplicated slide. Okay, select the two images on the far right and drag them completely off the right side of the slide. We want them out of view for this transition. Now select the image that's now in the center and drag it to the right, increasing its size. We want it to be the main focus now. Just like before, let's make sure each image is perfectly filling its frame. Select all the images one by one. Go to Crop and click Fill. Now select all the images again and press Ctrl plus G to group them. We're going to delete the title text at the top of this slide and now we want to make our image group a bit larger. So drag the corners to increase its size. Now we need to ungroup these images again so we can animate them individually in the next step. Go back to slide one. Select one of the logo circles and copy and paste it onto slide two. Now position this logo circle above the image that's now in the center of the slide. We need to do this for all the images that are visible on this slide. So copy and paste more logo circles and place them above each image. Make sure they're nicely aligned. Now select all the logo circles on slide two and reduce their size a little bit so they look proportionate. Now let's add the text. Then, back on slide two, grab a new text placeholder from the Shapes menu and paste the text into it. Change the color to white, choose your desired font. We'll use Poppins again and increase the font size until it looks good. Now let's do the same for the rest of the text elements on this slide. Okay, let's add some decorative stars to our slide. Go to the Shapes section and select the star shape. Now click and drag to draw a star on the slide. Go to Shape Outline and click No Outline. Then go to Shape Fill and choose a golden yellow color. To get a closer look, let's zoom in a bit using the zoom bar at the bottom right. That makes it easier to work with smaller details. Now, we want to create multiple stars. Hold down Shift and Control, and then click and drag the star to the right. Now, instead of repeating that process manually, we can just press F4A. This repeats the last action. Now, let's remove any stars that might be overlapping the text. We want them neatly arranged below the title text. Select all the star shapes and align them below the title text. Now we're going to add a gradient to the last star. Select the last star, right click, and select Format Shape. Now click on Gradient Fill. We want a linear right direction. So select that from the Direction drop-down. Now you'll see some gradient stops on this bar. We're going to remove the extra ones. We want to adjust the remaining gradient stops and center them. Now let's change their colors. Click on a stop to select it and then choose a color. We'll use a slightly darker gold for one and a brighter gold for the other to create a nice effect. Now group all star shapes.
Okay, let's add a background rectangle for our description text. Go to the Shapes section and select the rectangle. Click and drag to draw a rectangle on the slide below the title and stars. Remove the shape outline. Then go to Shape Fill and choose a dark blue color. Now we want this rectangle to be behind the text, so right-click on the rectangle and select Send to Back. Adjust the rectangle's size and position so that the text fits nicely inside it. Now let's add the description text. If copy-pasting text into a styled placeholder, you can use this option. This ensures that the text is pasted with the same size and format as the original text placeholder. Go to the Home tab and click Align Text Left in the Paragraph section. This will align the text to the left side of the rectangle. Go to the Shapes section and select the triangle. Draw a triangle on the slide below the rectangle, connecting it to the top edge of the rectangle. Remove its outline. For the color, we're going to use the Eyedropper tool. Go to Shape Fill, select Eyedropper, and then click on the dark blue color of the rectangle. Now, select both the rectangle and the triangle and press Ctrl plus G to group them. Now for the final touches to create the animation. Go back to the first slide and ungroup the image box. That's the group of all the images. Select all the individual image boxes and right click. Select Format Background. In the Format Background pane, decrease the transparency to about 97%. This will make the images almost completely transparent on the first slide, creating a nice fade-in effect. Select both slides, go to the Transitions tab and click on Morph. This is a really cool transition that smoothly animates the changes between the two slides. Okay, now we're going to create the rest of the slides for our slider. Duplicate the current slide. Repeat this step for rest of the slide. Now we're going to add hyperlinks to each slide. This will make our slider interactive. Select the Google logo group on the first slide. Go to Insert and select Action. In the Action settings, choose Hyperlink 2 and then select Slide. Choose Slide 2, which is the Google slide. Click OK. Now do the same process for the Apple and Microsoft logos on the first slide linking them to their respective slides. So the Apple logo links to the Apple slide and the Microsoft logo links to the Microsoft slide. Let's preview our entire slideshow. Now you can click on each logo on the first slide to jump to the corresponding company slide. And there you have it, a fully functional interactive image slider in PowerPoint. That's awesome. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Slide Uplift. Hit that bell icon to get notified for our next video. You can check out our channel for more PowerPoint tutorials.